Thanks, uh, last came Corla. And can I thank the regional independents for bringing forward this motion um, on incredibly important uh, subject and what is frankly a scandal in this country, which is the scandal of uh, vacant property, derelict property and uh, vacant sites uh, that could be used to address the incredibly severe, disastrous housing and homelessness crisis uh, that we are facing. Uh, and we support the vast, vast majority of measures that are being uh, proposed uh, here. There's a couple of things we dis disagree with, but you know, we don't always agree on everything. Uh, but I think uh, overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly we agree there needs to be radical new uh, emergency action to get vacant property and derelict property and vacant sites back into use to address the housing crisis. And the government has singularly failed uh, in its efforts uh, to do that to date. Uh, and now an already existing crisis uh, that we've had for nearly a decade um, that we haven't addressed of housing and homelessness and an emergency in that area is now being compounded by our need uh, to show, which we absolutely must, solidarity to people fleeing the bloody war uh, in Ukraine. So now has to be the moment when we do things that are unprecedented. And those measures have to solve the accommodation crisis, both for those who are affected by the, the ongoing housing emergency and the homelessness crisis and the people fleeing uh, from Ukraine. And unless we address in a seriously radical way the issue of vacant and derelict property, we're not going to be able to do that uh, in the time frame that's necessary. And it's important for us to just remember what the human side of all of this is, um, uh, uh, why it's so urgent. This is an email I just got in the last couple of days, but to be honest, I could read out dozens and dozens just from the last week or two. Richard, I'm a public servant in the HSE. I ended up homeless, sleeping in my car. I got zero help from my county council. I won't name who it is, so, I don't, so we don't identify the worker, my employer, but it was a rural county council, none. What happened to make me homeless was I had two deaths in my family, I left the family home, ended up all paying all my wages for a while in a hotel, getting loans to stay uh, in hotels, ended up uh, in severe money debt, had to sleep in my car, not one ounce of help from the council. Uh, they knew I was sleeping in my car, I was going to work, I begged the council to help me, nothing. I begged them to pay some of the hotel, I didn't even get a reply to that. It's disgusting what's going on here. I'm now living in a shed with no washing machine or cooker, damp with rodents, I'm a public servant, HSE, so God help anybody that has no job. And it carries on. Uh, this week I'm dealing with a case uh, of another healthcare worker, works in a Dublin hospital, uh, whose wife uh, has been crying to me in my office on the phone as she sits in a park with her three kids uh, while her husband is doing 12-hour shifts in a Dublin hospital uh, and, uh, and has worked all during uh, COVID uh, and there's nothing for them. Uh, they were told to go into, they, their kids go to school uh, in Shank Hill and Ballybrack and they were told to, to go to a place in the South Circular Road in Kilmainham, that that was all that was available for them. Uh, I have another council worker my area who's uh, sleeping in his car. I have another family who are sleeping in a shed uh, in a relative's back garden, and I could go on, right? Simultaneously, in my area, right across from my office that I've highlighted for the last four years, there are 15 empty apartments in the hands of a vulture fund, and he's trying to evict the five remaining tenants. And they've been empty for two years, and that's allowed to happen. And I've told three or four governments at this stage that we need to do something about this and that the state should have the power to go in and take those apartments and house the people who need them. There's a derelict uh, site that we highlighted a few years ago up at the end of uh, York Road. It's an area uh, near Dunleary. It's been sitting there for years, derelict. You could put dozens of houses on it. Um, and uh, they owe now 140,000, only because we highlighted it, they were put in the vacant site register. Uh, they owe 140,000 euro, uh, which they haven't paid. And the amount that's been paid, by the way, for the 91,000 vacant sites is pitiful, pitiful all across the country. We're not collecting this. 
And recently, essentially because we highlighted it, uh, they fixed the place up a bit in putting in for planning permission. But I know, right, because this, when we, when we highlighted this, uh, we discovered the company who owned it were registered in the Caribbean. Uh, that they're only fixing it up and putting in planning permission in order to stave off uh, action over its dereliction. Right? And this stuff is going on. Our main street in Dunleary is littered with empty buildings. Some of them in private hands, some of them in public hands. There's a place called Kelly's Hotel on George's place in Dunleary, which, is, as it sounds, used to be a hotel. It's owned by the council and it's been sitting there for as long as I can remember, a decade. We need a women's refuge. We need uh, pl places for the homeless families that are in sheds and being sent to the other side of the city. And it's sitting there empty in public hands. Uh, and I could go on. Right? This has to stop. Now, if this is not the moment when we're going to take emergency measures, uh, and that means short-circuiting property rights, in my opinion. Let's just call a spade a spade. This cannot be allowed to stand. In my opinion, we don't even need a referendum in order to make this happen, because the Constitution allows for the common good to override property uh, rights, uh, and the common good is clearly served by ending the utter scandal of workers and families and kids uh, in sheds, sleeping in cars, uh, or being sent to emergency accommodation on the other side of the city where they couldn't possibly hope to get their kids to school in the morning. Right? We passed a, a, a referendum on children's rights, and we're doing this to kids. More than 2,000 kids, and the number's rising again. Their rights surely override, override uh, the rights of speculators to sit on empty property, or vulture funds, as is in the case uh, of St. Helens Court, uh, or owners of derelict buildings like Dunn Stores own derelict site right in the middle of Dunleary and has been uh, derelict for years. It's an absolute scandal. So we need action where the state can go in and say, if you've not got a good uh, excuse for something that is derelict or vacant for, I don't know, six months, more than six months, we're taking it off you. We're taking it off you, we're going to refurbish it and we're going to put, it, uh, put people who need housing, who have a right to housing, uh, whose rights are being abused uh, and breached by not being provided with the basic thing of a secure roof over their head. And really, I don't think how we can call ourselves a government, uh, or anybody can call themselves a government if they can't do that for people when the physical properties and the sites are there. Uh, and we don't even count the derelict. In the census that's coming up, or in the last census, we didn't even count the derelict sites. So we need teams being sent out from every local authority across this country, counting these sites and insisting they are brought back into use, regardless of the impact uh, on the property owners.